Now let's focus our attention to um, reactor sizing, but now in terms of conversions instead of uh, moles. We're going to start uh, with the most um, easiest example, which is the batch reactor. Uh, on the figure on the left, uh, this is a water treatment facility and this batch reactor are very, very common in this industry. This is a um, sequence batch, batch reactor system. So while one reactor, the one on the right is uh, working, then the other one is shut down. Probably you can just unload it and then the other one is being on, on working operation at the same time. Uh, so this is a way of maximizing the space available in um, the facility. Um, this particular topic that we're going to be talking about will have some main goals. Uh, the first one is that we're going to go all over again the balance equation in terms now on conversion. This time I'm going to be skipping some steps and we're going to go to the conclusion that the same analysis can be performed uh, as we did before uh, with mole balances. Uh, and, and the other thing that we're going to do is that we are going to size the reactors uh, given uh, the rate of reaction of the limiting reactant on one of the reactants as a function of conversion. Then we're going to see uh, examples comparing CSDRs and PFRs. And we're going to be deciding the best arrangement for reactors in series to maximize conversion. And we're going to be calculating the overall conversion of reactors volumes for reactors that are arranged in series. So this is going to be a sequence of a couple of videos. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea is that we mix them up. We mix up different type of reactors and try to get or maximize, con maximize conversion. So this, uh, this section of the class is going to be really fun. So let's start with the definition of conversion. Uh, for conversion, uh, we need to select a reactant, typically or most commonly is the limiting reactant as the basis of calculation. Remember that once you have uh, the conversion for one reactant, you can use the stoichiometry pretty much to relate this conversion to other species in the chemical react reaction. Um, it is important that we you choose the limiting reactant because technically it's the reactant that will be con completely consumed first after the reactant has been mixed, therefore provides uh, more information uh, about, our, about the reaction. Okay, so let's start with uh, a general reaction. This reaction... Uh, we're going to select A as our limiting reactant and to have uh, you know, the re chemical reaction defined as in terms of the chemical reactant, what we're going to do is that we're going to normalize the chemical uh, reaction uh, for one mole of the chemical reactant. So we're going to have a chemical equation that will, have, will look like this. Okay, so that means that we can define conversion as uh, capital X equals to the moles of A reacted over the moles of A fed into the system. This, this is an important quantity because it tells us information about how far the reaction proceeds to product. We can actually see that. Uh, we can also relate this to any other species in the chemical reaction. You can drop the subscript. You're going to see it that, that I just dropped the subscript because one of the assumptions when we develop this uh, equation is that uh, a is the limiting reactant. So once you know the limiting reactant, you can you can just define A x right 
instead of instead of using XA. I will use those terms, you know, it, it will depend right on, on the type of uh, problem that I'm solving. Uh, there are important things to consider when we have uh, the conversion uh, definition. One is that for irre irreversible reactions, reactions <clears throat> where the equilibrium constant K, right, is really, really large, the maximum conversion that we can have X maximum equals to, or is close to, right, not always equal, is close to 1.0, uh, 1.0. For a, for a reversible reaction, X max conversion maximum equals to the X at equilibrium. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna see examples for both, uh, but it's important that we look at the chemical reaction, right, and the identity of that chemical reaction to kind of understand or guide us on what is the maximum amount of conversion we can have for that particular reaction. So for batch systems, we can define uh, or we can assume, right, that uh, the accumulation term uh, is different than zero. Uh, that means that for the mass balance, this uh, term is going to be important. So we need to uh, take uh, define what is Na and see if we can find an expression right on the number of mole in terms of conversion. So we know that Na right can be defined as the moles entering the initially in the reactor, not entering initially in the reactor, minus however whatever sorry whatever reacted. Of uh, the uh, of species A, okay. We can then take this term and try to get the derivative form, right? And we can see that with respect time and combining. We have remember that the sign is because we are we know that it's a reactant that is not being accumulated, it is being produced, and we are arranging Separating <clears throat> variables and integration provides the parameter for the batch reactor. This will be the time necessary to achieve a conversion of X in a batch reactor. Notice that the longer the reactants are left in the reactor, the greater the conversion will be. We can also represent this, uh, this uh, equation in a graphical form, right? If we graph Na initial uh, moles of a Remember that this is also the initial concentration of uh, A. We get a graph that looks something like this, kind of. Yeah, it looks something like that. And if I'm trying, right, this is X, try to get a specific conversion, oops, 
trying to get a the the to look at a specific conversion like this one, right? And then we look at the y-axis, right? Because this equation is in the form of an integral, we can see that the <clears throat> the the area right under corresponds to t or the time. So if we have data uh, collected for that particular reactor, we can actually rearrange the parameters so they look like uh, this uh, type of graph. And we can graphically calculate the time of the reactor. 